Hi everyone, welcome to Goodness by SK here on YouTube. I'm Sherry and this is podcast episode number three. Today I want to just do a traditional podcast episode, take you through what I've been working on lately. You'll notice that uh, I've been doing quite a lot of monogamous knitting, so I don't have a ton of new stuff to show. Um, so we'll see how long this is today. Um, I also wanted to say, you know, thank you for all the likes and comments on my previous episodes. It really means a lot to me. And so just if you enjoy this episode of my podcast, please remember to uh, like and subscribe. And as I mentioned before, I really enjoy building a knitting community here. So uh, I appreciate all the comments and I love to respond and engage with everyone. So, you know, if you feel like it, just go ahead and comment at the end of this episode. So on my last episode, I asked if there was anything that people wanted to know about me because I said, you know, I've primarily been focused on talking about knitting content here. I wasn't sure how much people wanted to uh, hear about my personal life. And a few people had commented saying that they would really like to know more about how I ended up in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, what sort of drove that decision, what I do for a living in product management. So I figured rather than kick off with that, um, if I have time today to film, I will leave that for the end of the video and that way you guys can just uh, hang around at the end and listen to that story. But for those that are not here for that type of content, um, I won't distract you with it. So then we can just dig into the knitting. Oh, I've had a bit of a busy period at work lately. I was actually just in Paris for my job last week. So I did a bit of knitting on the train, but that is a reason that it took a little bit longer to get this uh, third podcast episode up because I just haven't had a ton of time to sit and film. Uh, we also had friends in again on the weekend, uh, not staying with us this time, but they were visiting from Australia. So um, we just spent the day together on Saturday when I was originally planning to film this episode. And so now uh, I'm doing it on a lunch break um, on Monday. I guess uh, the first thing that I'll talk about is my finished object, which I mentioned in my last video, and that is my cumulus tee. Um, I am super happy with this. I think I've worn it three times in the last week. Um, I really like the color and the yarn. So just a reminder, it's made of knitting for all of pure silk. I can never remember the exact color. Um, I think like plum rose or something like that. I will comment uh, in the description. Um, yeah, I think the fit of this is perfect. If I were to make it again though, um, I think I would actually just add a few centimeters so that it did a French tuck a little bit better. And also I had mentioned before for the eye cord, I didn't have the 2.5 millimeter um, knitting needles. So I had to go with a 2.75. And I think it's, it's not too bad, but the eye cord is a, a little bit bigger than uh, maybe it should have been. So I would uh, definitely buy the right needles next time and do that properly. And also like a few people have said um, on Ravelry and in their knitting podcasts, maybe not doing the eye cord decreases for the hem and sleeves. It does make it a little bit tighter and I think the fit would have been nicer if I hadn't. Um, but overall, it fits great. I had said before that I didn't think I would make another one since this was three millimeter needles and it took quite a while but as i've stepped away from it now i actually think um i would come back to this so it's actually sort of the perfect project to just have on your needles as a basic stockinette because once you get past this uh, v-neck increases and you join in the round it's a pretty mindless knit and so i would really love to have a more basic color like a lighter gray or a cream and therefore, I think I might actually just buy the yarn, cast it on, and then have it be one of those projects that I just do throughout the year. And when I finish it, I finish it. But I'm just, this is probably one of my favorite pieces that I've ever knit. And 
yeah, why not have more colors of it? So I kind of get now why people make a few. It's just, you have to have the patience for it. So that's my only finished object. I was hoping to be a bit further along with some other projects, um, but I didn't get there. So maybe I'll start with the one that I was hoping to be done, uh, which is, I've already showed this, uh, my Sophie shawl. So I'm making this in Drops Nepal in, I don't know, some sort of dark gray color. I did get to the point where I've now started the uh, decreases and I don't have a whole lot more to say on this than I did last time. The yarn is still a little bit scratchy but a few people commented that uh, their experience with drops Nepal is that typically once it's blocked it does soften up though somebody did mention it also pills a lot so we'll see how this wears. It was really budget friendly um, so I think nothing lost on this. I do think I'm going to give it as a gift knit uh, to one of my friends when I go home. And I'm thinking, you know, within the next week, I'll be done this. So you should see the finished object on my next episode. Uh, the other piece that I have made a ton of progress on is my Cardi Jumper by Vert Knit. So I said in the last episode that I expected to be done the body, uh, which I am now. So I finished off the ribbing. And then I also did the, oh, oh my God, okay. I also did all the eye cord, yeah, edging. And I even this weekend, managed to get through pretty much uh, one of the entire sleeves. So um, yeah, I would say by this evening, I'll be done this one sleeve. Uh, it's a bit annoying. So I didn't have the 2.5 millimeter um, needle so that I could do magic loop on this. So all I had was the 2.5 fixed circulars from Chao Gu. And this is the first time I've ever used them. I started yesterday. I'd only have to do uh, 12 rounds of one by one ribbing. <laughs> These are so tiny and so difficult to work with. I got through two rounds and was like, okay, I, I think I need to put this down for today because this is really uncomfortable. So thankfully it will be short, but I used to think I would be able to knit socks on these. And I think I'm just gonna stick with magic loop. Um, so what I want to actually say about this piece, um, and I think I'll insert a video of me kind of wearing it in its current state so that, um, people can see it a bit better. Um, but what I wanted to say about this one is, um, I made, so no mods to the body. So this is all knit as, uh, the pattern shows. But then when I got to the sleeves, I ended up only picking up 85 stitches when it recommended 87. So what I ended up doing was I did my first decrease for the size 38, which is what I'm knitting. And then after that, I calculated that to end up at the, um, how many stitches was it? 67 stitches that I was supposed to end with. I should just do the decrease um, repeat for the size 36. So I did that. I ended up exactly at the right length. Um, so that worked out well. And then I kept on the 36 also for the um, bottom decreases. So the way that this works is you um, section it off. So you have your upper arm until about 6.5 centimeters below your elbow crease. And then you do the lower arm decreases, which happen a bit more rapidly. And you can see that in um, how much narrower it gets. The other um, mod well, not modification that I made, I guess tip that I used is I ended up going with Patty Lyons um, 
uh, tip for the slip slip knit so that it looks a bit smoother. So this is the first time that I've used it and I will uh, link to her video. Um, so this is from the Knitting Bag of Tricks. Yeah, so hopefully you can kind of see that the left and right look a little bit more consistent now, whereas on something like my Cumulus, I just did a, a typical slip slip knit and that has a bit more of a pronounced ridge to it. So I did like the look of this. I think it came out a little bit cleaner. And also I managed to knit most of the sleeve for this in, um, in the round, thankfully, because I talked last time about how much I hate Magic Loop. But I also found a really good video from Patty Lyons about how to avoid the laddering in Magic Loop. And what you do basically is when you have your needles, um, so you have your long cord here, let's pretend that I do. And then when you go to start a new round, rather than holding them outwards like most people do, you hold these as if they're together. And then you would pull this needle out and knit it while you're holding the two together. So I'll, I'll link it so that I can show it to you properly. Uh, but that resulted in, you know, pretty much the whole bottom part of this is magic loop and there's absolutely no laddering. So that is a trick that I'm going to be using all the time going forward because it absolutely works um, and it's not that difficult. So it's not really about the tension that you're using. It's just the way that you're holding your needles. So for anybody that also struggles with magic loop like I do, I would highly recommend that. So I think, you know, I don't have a ton more to say about this one because I've also shown it to you twice before. I'm hoping by next weekend I will have this final sleeve done. Then I can put the buttons on, which I also received. So I ordered the recommended buttons, which are from Atelier Brunette, I believe. And... Yeah, they're a little bit hard to see, um, but they're just um, like a very simple nine millimeter button. And I got seven of those to put on. Um, the company I ordered from was in Germany and one of them actually showed up broken and the service was great. They uh, sent me a replacement right away. So I've got those ready to go. I think what I'm gonna do is block the sweater first <clears throat> and then uh, put the buttons on at the very end. So very excited to wear this piece. Uh, I think it's gonna be much worn in my winter wardrobe, especially in the reverse look. Uh, then the other piece, so I showed you last time that I had done my swatch um, for the blouse number two from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And during my trip to Paris, I ended up making a ton of progress on this. Um, so here is where I'm at. Uh, so the way that this top works is you cast on um, your uh, in the round and you do the neckline. So you keep going until you've done um, a lot of, I forget how many rounds. Uh, all your raglan um, increases. And then you separate so that you can work the front and the back on their own. And, you know, I was worried that this project would be really difficult because of the pattern, but actually in the round, the pattern is super easy to follow, especially because there's no salvage stitches. So it's just, um, rounds one and two are the exact same as rounds um, five and six. And then you have one round of increases or um, yarn overs for the third, but basically it's purl, knit, purl, knit, and doubles. Um, so that was really easy in the round also because there was no selvage stitches. Then when you get to the uh, working in the flap for the front and the back, it becomes a little bit trickier because 
you basically have knits, then purls, then a yarn over, and then you also have selvage stitches, which change based on are you on a right side or a wrong side row. So especially when I had a lot going on at work the last couple weeks, I could not work on this without looking at the pattern. Um, but I think I finally got into a groove of it. I finished the front paddle, panel um, last week and I've now moved on to, I just barely started on the back. So I think, you know, I'm really excited for how this is going to look when it's done. Um, I think I have seven more um, repeats of the pattern for the back and then you join in the body again, you have a few more increases, and then I think you just work all the way down and then you'll do the sleeves. Uh, the other thing that I wanna say about this one is I am actually really enjoying working with the Drops Cotton Merino on this. <coughs> I said when I was doing the gauge swatch that I wasn't really sure. Um, it seemed like it was splitting a little bit and it wasn't gonna be the nicest. Uh, but it's actually really soft and as somebody who has worked a lot with the We Are Knitters Pima Cotton I found that one actually split a lot more when you were knitting with it So like your needle would go through and it just I don't know. It wasn't the most enjoyable But with this I'm finding the yarn soft. I don't find I have a ton of issues with my needle going through the middle of it Maybe it's just because of the needles that I'm using but it's been really enjoyable and so I think you know, we'll see once we block it and I wear it and how it holds up, but I think this is one where I would actually buy this cotton merino again and work with it, especially in the summer. And I think if I end up really liking the fit of this, it's kind of hard to tell right now how I'm going to feel with how it looks on my body. Uh, but uh, my favorite things that were just released the blouse number two light version, which is all mohair. And I think I really want to make that in the plum clay color from Knitting for Olive. Uh, but I'll make that decision once I finish this and I see how the fit is. Because um, I'm a little bit worried that the sleeves might be a little bit too wide. Maybe the neck won't suit me. But we'll see. I mean, this is definitely a project too that... As I've been stressed, I've really enjoyed working on it because it's a complete distraction for my brain. <laughs> Therefore, I just can't do anything else other than focus on it. And I kind of don't want it to be over, but I think once I'm done my cardigan, that will end up being my number one piece that I work on. That brings me to my final whip, which is more of a spur of the moment cast on. I did bring it up in my fall knitting plans. Uh, but I didn't really have any intention of working on it anytime soon. And that is my Sunday sock. Oh, my hair is always everywhere. Um, so I was just sitting on the couch one evening with my husband and all my other projects, either like with my cardigan, I had to add the, um, or I had to pick up stitches for the sleeves, which I really didn't want to do at nine o'clock at night. I had my blouse number two, which required me to focus. And I just wanted something where I wasn't going to have to count rows, like also my Sophie shawl. I need to pay attention to how often I was doing the increases or decreases. So I wanted something that I could just cast on and go so that I could spend time with him as well. And this was nice because the beginning is just a 25 centimeter uh, two by two rib tube. And I already had the yarn for it. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna cast it on. I'm using the Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool in Camel, which I have left over from a Weekender Slipover V-neck from Petite Knit. Oh, also uh, this is the Petite Knit Sunday Sock pattern. Um, so it was going really, really smooth. I pretty much did the ribbing in one night. Then the next day I started on the heel. And just for clarification, this is the second sock ever that I am knitting. The first one went okay. It was a fingering weight sock, but I was just expecting, okay, this one will be super simple. It's on four millimeter needles. Um, so I also thought it would go really fast, which it did. But I realized on the third day I was working on it. Let's see if I can show this. 
So I did the heel, yeah. I did the heel, which turned out okay. And then you separate, you add stitch markers and you end up doing decreases to get back down to the original number of stitches. And somehow <laughs> I ended up adding my stitches in a very weird spot, apparently. I don't know how. And so now I have a really weird decrease line that's not where it should be. So I still, I don't fully understand what happened, um, but at least what I think I can do is just rip back to the beginning of the um, ribbing before I started the heel there and then just try, try again. I don't think I have to go back and do all the ribbing. So, I think during the course of this week, that's what I'll end up doing. I will just kind of restart this one a little bit. Um, and then if this goes well, if they turn out not a complete mess, then I think I will gift these to my sister-in-law in Jasper when I go home because she really enjoys cozy items. She's always really bundled up and I think these are the perfect house socks for her. And I'd also love to make a pair for myself, but probably in a different color. So those are all the uh, works in progress that I have right now. I'm itching to cast on something else, but I really, really just want to finish my cardigan first so that that doesn't sit there forever because I want to wear it. And then I think the next thing I'll cast on is the Salty Days sweater. Um, I did decide that I'm going to gauge swatch for it again, just to make sure I end up with the correct needle size because I think I actually need to go from a five to a six um, instead of a 5.5, .5, but we'll see. So I think that'll be my next cast on. And then also the cami number nine, because that should just be a quick uh, mindless knit as well. And then I still have a ton of gift knits that I need to do before I go home in November. Um, so then acquisitions, um, I haven't been buying a lot because I have said before, I really only like to buy yarn when I know that I for sure have a project ready for it. So since I already have yarn for a couple projects that haven't started, I've been holding off. But what I did end up buying is the yarn for the Storm Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. That is um, a pattern I want to make for my nephew for when I go home. It's also his birthday. He'll be turning one years old. So I'm going to make the size one to two of that. Uh, but the yarn that was called for that I knit the um, Ingrid Sweater Baby in before was the Double Sunday. And the downside of that is it's not super wash and so it's not really the easiest to care for and the more I was thinking about that the more I'm like do I really want to give something that will be a bit of a hassle um, especially with a kid they're going to get stuff all over it um, and I just want it to be an easy piece so I did some research and I ended up with I feel like there's been such a theme lately the drops um merino extra fine i should have picked one with a better label here um so i think where the double sunday would have ended up being like 40 to 50 euros for the sweater to get the yarn quantity i needed this was 21 euros for six balls so really affordable it is super wash, um, 50 grams for a 105 meters, and it's 100% wool. So this should be really easy to care for. Uh, the color is number five, so it's just this light gray. And I haven't knit the swatch yet, but just from feeling it, I find it really squishy and nice, so I think it'll end up being uh, quite a wearable piece and hopefully something that he can get a lot of use out of. So I'm very excited for that. Um, and that is the only yarn that I bought. <laughs> and then the other thing which I mentioned in my last video that I was influenced by Emily from High Fiber Knits is my neck light. So... I'm like, I feel like such a nerd. My husband has made so much fun of me. Um, but yes, I bought this. It is three color settings, also different brightness settings. 
uh, and it makes me feel like a huge, huge nerd as I'm knitting, uh, but it has been really handy for the blouse number two knitting at night. Um, it makes it much easier to see the stitches and the pattern. So I think, you know, it's barely even dark here right now. I think around 7.30 it starts to get dark, but this is going to get a lot of use um, as winter just creeps in, or I guess fall for now. So it's not the most comfortable to wear for hours and hours on end, but it's good enough for a few hours of knitting in the evening. And I am very glad that I bought it. And I don't care if my husband makes fun of me. So that is pretty much it. Let me just double check my notes here. Um, yeah, I think that was it for kind of the traditional podcast episode. And now for those that want to stick around, I will tell you a little bit more about myself um, in case you're interested. Uh, and if not, then feel free to just like and subscribe uh, to my channel and throw a comment down below if you have any thoughts on the projects I'm working on. For those that asked, um, there was a few people that really wanted to know kind of how I ended up in Amsterdam all the way from Canada. I moved here about six years ago with my husband and honestly when I was in Canada, I mean the whole time I was growing up, I never really thought that I would move away. Um, it was never on my mind, I figured I'd spend my entire life in Canada and then as we were getting older and you know our friends were starting to move out to the suburbs, have babies, my husband and I just started thinking okay, maybe this is like the perfect moment to have a bit of an adventure and, you know, try living somewhere else. But we didn't get into it too much until we went on our honeymoon. So we've been married 10 years. We went on our honeymoon nine years ago. And our first stop was Amsterdam. And as I was doing research on Amsterdam, I started to look at, you know, what kind of job opportunities were there, what was the culture like and found that marketing and finance, which were the fields that we had been in back home, were really prevalent here. So there was tons of job opportunity. You know, at the time I was working in advertising agencies, there are hundreds here in the Netherlands uh, and my husband was in finance and there's lots of opportunity here for that as well. So, that was sort of the number one kind of thing that got us thinking. And then it's also just a country where English is spoken very widely. It's rare that you'll come across somebody here that doesn't speak English very well. There's just lots of job opportunity and it's also really easy to travel from here. So it's pretty much a travel hub from the airport. You can get anywhere. And that's really exciting to us because coming from Canada, especially um, in Alberta, it takes quite a while to go anywhere outside of the States, Mexico, Hawaii. Uh, so when you were planning to come to Europe, it would end up being this three week vacation where you took all your holidays for the year. You did this huge, exhausting trip through Europe and then came home and basically needed a trip from your trip. So. Long story short, um, when we got back from our honeymoon, we started to more seriously look into uh, if it would make sense to move here. And one thing we found is, so my husband's family is from Poland, and even though he was born in Canada, he could get his Polish citizenship, which would make it much easier for us to move to Europe. So we started to really dig into that to see, okay, how does he go about getting his Polish citizenship so he could get his, um, EU passport and once we knew that was possible we were like okay let's book a trip back to Amsterdam. We came a year later, we spent an entire week in Amsterdam, we met with recruiters, we met with uh, real estate agents just to get a sense of the rental market here and just explored the city to see okay you know now that we're not just spending a couple of days here on a honeymoon do we actually see ourselves living here? And 
that really solidified things for us. We loved Amsterdam. We just loved the feeling of the city. It felt magical. It's small enough that you can get around easily. It's basically a village within a larger city. And we came home and decided, okay, let's put together a giant list of everything that we would need to do to be able to move and let's just start taking things off and seeing if we're actually serious about this and so my husband applied for his citizenship in poland he got that we sold our house which was a little bit crazy because it was during a pretty bad recession in calgary um and we were really down to the wire we almost decided to take it off the market and just give up uh, but we had a buyer come through basically in the last moment we sold our house, we sold our car, we sold 90% of all our belongings, we moved into a furnished apartment in, Am or in uh, Calgary, and then just started applying to jobs. And we said, whoever gets a job first, we're just going to move and figure it out once we get there. And so, you know, we were interviewing for jobs. I think I had one interview at four in the morning. Most of the interviews were at six. We didn't tell our jobs that we were <laughs> looking for jobs in Amsterdam. So it was like we were living this double life for you know a year and a half. It was really quite intense, um, but it was worth it. My husband ended up getting a job first. We, you know, because we'd already set up our lives to move here, um, we were able to pack our bags, say goodbye to family and be within Amsterdam within five weeks. And then my husband started his job a week later. So that's sort of the rosy colored picture of it. I think, um, you know, moving to a new country, it's always a bit jarring as well. You have this dream of how amazing and perfect it's gonna be. And definitely the first six months to a year were tough. You know, you don't have your friend group here. You don't have your family. It took me three months to find a job. Um, and yeah, it, it wasn't as magical as we expected it to be for the first bit, but in the end, everything worked out. Obviously we've been here six years now, so um, we must like it somewhat. We've managed to make some really good friends and the job opportunities here are just really incredible. So um, that maybe brings me more to the job side of things. So. Like I said, in Canada, I'd been working as a um, sort of account director within advertising agencies and digital agencies. And I already knew that I was looking for a change from that. I had started to shift more into digital strategy. And then when we moved here, I ended up getting a job as a project manager just for a six month contract. And that ended up turning into a full-time role where they asked if I would actually come on as a product manager in tech, so looking after their entire digital portfolio of products and, you know, working with the developers and designers to determine customer needs. So I didn't really know that that was even a job when I was back home. Uh, and I'm so happy that I fell into that because it's really become a passion for me. Um, over the last six years, I've kind of moved up. I spent a few years working more on e-com uh, product management and then, you know, building uh, point of sales systems and internal tools. And now I'm in a SaaS company in a more senior role, managing a team of product managers and designers. So it's been really great. It's also just been one of those roles where you know I've gotten a chance to start speaking at events and becoming more of a thought leader in the space and that's been nice because it's also really helped with my confidence and it's one of the reasons that I decided to start this podcast as well because it gives me a chance to practice speaking and becoming more comfortable um, in my own skin a little bit and that's a skill that's really important to develop as I am growing in my career. So obviously for, you know, privacy reasons, I don't want to get too much into um, exactly what I'm doing or where I'm working. But if there's any other product managers or people in tech out there, uh, let me know. Uh, one thing I am starting to think more seriously about as well is how I can, you know, sort of leverage my skill set and career into something more in knitting. And I do have some ideas for some 
um, digital tools that I can build to help knitters because I find personally a lot of the things out on the market right now um, you know are really good at maybe one thing or they have usability issues they're not the most user friendly and so I have a few ideas sort of percolating in my head um, that I might want to explore and it's another reason to start this channel is so that hopefully I have a group of people that I can reach out to and talk to about these things, do a bit more user interviews and feedback and see if that's really a path that I want to go down um, because yeah I think turning my passion into more of a you know at least part-time side hustle career could be nice, um, especially as I'm getting older and starting to look more towards um, what do I want to do later in life rather than just kind of the work grind 40 hours a week. So that's a little bit more about me. I'm happy to answer other questions if you have them. Just feel free to drop them in the comments. And thank you so much for joining today. Um, I don't know how long this ended up being. I feel like I've been talking forever. Uh, and I will try to be a little bit better about posting podcast episodes more often, um, but we'll see how things actually go. Thank you so much for joining today, and remember, like, subscribe, comment, and I look forward to hanging out with you again next time. Thanks. Bye.